Checking on Money Matters this morning, shirt sales are booming at Walmart, and it has to do with COVID-19. Americans are still wary of the stock market, even with the big gains this week. Jane King joins us live from her home with those stories and more in this morning's Money Matters report. Good morning, Jane. Hi, Bruce and Jen. Good morning to you. Yes, we've had a pretty impressive stock market rally this week, but Americans still are skeptical of this and wary of the stock market. And it certainly does look like we will continue to have volatility. We're looking about 700 points lower here this morning. Uh, this survey was done by Allianz Life, and they found that in addition to about half of Americans still uncertain about the stock market, that it's bottomed out, about 63% do believe we are already in or headed for a recession. Well, Florida unemployment claims reached record high due to coronavirus. The state had 74,000 claims for the week that ended March 21st. That's up from 6,400 in the prior week. So huge difference there, according to the Labor Department. That uh, previous high for one week in Florida was 40,000, which was set in 2009 during the Great Recession. Well, social distancing could create 15 million jobs in the next decade. Career experts say if employers would hire remote workers, they would gain access to a wider talent pool, and that could create about 15 million jobs for people that are currently sidelined from the labor force. This would be newly unemployed workers, caregivers, those who are semi-retired, and those with disabilities or health conditions. And a Walmart executive vice president told Yahoo Finance the retail giant is seeing a spike in sales of apparel tops. There has not, however, been a corresponding increase in sales of pants, shorts, and skirts. The reason, according to Walmart, shoppers stuck working at home are more concerned with looking good from the waist up due to all the video conferencing that we're doing these days. Live from New York, I'm Jane King. Back to you, Bruce and Jen. That's like weather people who wear a shirt and tie and maybe some board shorts and flip-flops. I, I admit, I've got some comfy pants on today. You know, they're not pajamas, but they are comfortable. Just in case you have to stand up. All right, I am wearing comfortable shoes. Let me put it that way right now. Yeah. All right, thanks, Jane. Hey, have a good weekend. Thanks. You All right, it is 7.36 on this Friday morning. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has tested positive for the new coronavirus. Johnson's office says that he was tested after showing mild symptoms. Downing Street says Johnson is self-isolating and continuing to lead the country's response to COVID-19. Earlier this week, we learned that Prince Charles also has the virus. It's unclear if the two had any contact. The Queen and Prince Philip, though, are now self-isolating at Windsor Castle in line with government guidance for anyone over 90 years old. There are now more than 2,400 confirmed cases of the coronavirus here in Florida. That means the Sunshine State now has the seventh most cases in the country. Northeast Florida is dealing with at least 225 infections. Duval County is getting hit the hardest, as you can see, with 82 people who are infected. There are 53 in Alachua and another 36 in St. Johns County. Now, some of our area's latest confirmed cases include even more young people. In Duval County, a 13-year-old has the virus. An 11-year-old was also diagnosed last weekend, you may remember. St. Johns and Clay County both have 12-year-olds who are infected as well. And as we first reported earlier this week, a 2-year-old is being treated in Alachua County. This is exactly what we were talking about yesterday morning when we interviewed a local pediatrician. Children tend to be asymptomatic, and as a result, if they get the virus, they are more likely then to affect others in the family since they are not showing signs of the virus. So keep that in mind. Learn much more in case you missed it by watching our interview with the chief of community pediatrics at UF Health. We've posted it on the morning show page of newsforjacks.com. So far, eight people died in Northeast Florida. That includes that man you see right there, an 82-year-old Navy veteran from Fleming Island. It's Leroy Hansinger. He died Monday. Born in New York, but raised his family right here in Northeast Florida. His daughter, Debbie Reiser, shared these photos with News for Jax. Hansinger was in a hospital bed. His wife was by his side, but the family, they had to hold signs through the window that read, I love you, Papa. He was buried Wednesday. His daughter wrote in a Facebook post, although he was not able to have the military ceremony he deserved, surrounded by more than immediate family, we were blessed to have a family who saluted the family with flags as we drove by, and another that played the most beautiful version of Taps, I have ever heard. We weren't able to hug one another, and I couldn't cry on my husband's shoulder, but we said goodbye to this great man in the best way possible. Covering Georgia, students will be out of school for at least another month. Governor Brian Kemp issued an executive order closing all public schools now through April 24th. The earliest students can go back is Monday, April 27th. 
Kemp says that timeline could again change, and depending on the circumstances, they could return earlier. Universities and technical colleges will remain online through the end of the semester. Well, face masks have flown off the shelves around the nation, even though experts have advised people against wearing them unless they are sick. Baptist Health is asking you to help by donating home-sewn face masks and isolation gowns to the hospital. Hospitals got online patterns, templates, and instructions for anyone at home who can help make them. Hospital officials say the masks provide more than physical protection. The fabric masks also tell our staff that the people in the community are supporting them. And that is worth a lot. The moral support and the community support is really important. It reminds them not to touch their faces, and it really does provide some protection against airborne germs. Baptist says they sanitize all donations before distributing them. We've posted the instructions on how to make the equipment and where to drop it off on our website, newsforjacks.com. Talk about creativity. The Jacksonville-based company Fanatics, you know, you get all your sportswear from them. It's also working to help doctors and nurses making these masks and gowns at a plant in Pennsylvania. They're made out of the same fabric the plant uses to make official Major League Baseball jerseys. Recognize pinstripes there? Pretty cool, huh? Very creative. Now, Positively Jacks, a local restaurant is stepping up to help doctors and nurses who are working long hours to fight COVID-19. The general manager of Havana Jack says that since the dining room is closed, she wants to help feed those on the front lines of this pandemic. News for Jacks reporter Jennifer Reddy joining us live this morning. Jen, this is a tough time for so many businesses, but this restaurant is more focused on helping others. Jen, we are hearing so many stories of communities coming together during this time, and this story is no different. I spoke to the general manager of Havana, Jax, who says that she wants to make sure that these nurses and doctors are fed, and it's the least that they can do during this time. For decades, Havana Jax has been serving the Jacksonville community, but now their dining room and club are empty after being forced to temporarily close in-house dining to stop the spread of the coronavirus. The whole industry has changed a lot with all these coronavirus. What we're mostly involved with is trying to help our community and to make sure that everyone is safe during this coronavirus. To do so, the Cuban restaurant is putting its now quieter kitchen to use, cooking up fresh meals for nurses and doctors working on the front lines of this crisis. We thought that we needed to help our doctors and nurses since they were not able to go home and cook because they're working long hours. 14, 24 hour shifts they're working, so we thought we'd give back by giving them food so that they can take home and provide for their families. Havana Jacks already delivered dozens of containers of food to the emergency department at Baptist Health downtown. And on top of every container, a simple thank you message. All of them called us. We probably had about six phone calls from the physicians thanking us for providing food for them. So we're happy and we want to extend that to all the doctors in our facility. Extending a helping hand and a warm meal to those helping patients every day. The general manager says that she wants to help provide free meals to doctors and nurses in the entire Jacksonville area. We have all of the information on our website, newsforjax.com. Jennifer Reddy, Channel 4, The Local Station. Thank you, Jen. Taking care of our neighbors, one group is helping local seniors get the food and supplies that they need, but supplies are running out. How you can help, next. Being injured in an accident is only the beginning of your problems. You only get one shot at compensation. Make it count. Farah and Farah. Local businesses are here for you. Be there for them too. Once every 10 years, we have a chance to stand up and be counted. The 2020 census is now and every person matters. The more people we have here in Northeast Florida and Southeast Georgia means more money for our communities, education, and roads. It's confidential and cannot be shared with anyone. The 2020 Census is our once in a decade opportunity. You're here, you count. Fill out the 2020 Census, be counted. 
There's a lot more to love at Subaru of Jacksonville during the Subaru A Lot to Love event. Dealer Raider's number one Subaru dealer in the nation is bringing you 0% financing on all new Subarus. Buy the three-row 2020 Ascent with 0% financing for 72 months. Or lease a new Forester for $249 for 0% financing. Plus a complimentary national lifetime warranty or two years maintenance. Get the best experience, largest selection, and 0% financing only at Subaru of Jacksonville. Drive a Subaru. You'll buy a Subaru. Need a floor that can handle this? Then come to the Floor Trader. You'll find the latest styles that are kid-proof, pet-proof, and yes, even this-proof. Plus, everything's in stock ready to go, so you can take it home the very same day. Shop now and save up to $500 on the best selection of hardwood, carpet, luxury vinyl, and more. Plus, no interest monthly financing. Sale ends soon, so hurry in today. Floor Trader, the money saver. The amazing thing about Morgan & Morgan is that not only are we the largest personal injury law firm in America, we're also very much a local law firm. And our office right here in your town, you will find dedicated, hardworking neighbors of yours who are committed to fighting for you, for the people. And as members of your community, we share your values and are available whenever you need us. We're from your city, we're in your city, we are for the people. Morgan & The stars come out to play on ET. Let's go! Celeb guest hosts <laughs> work every night of the week. <laughs> say my name, say my Only name. Only on ET. That's so good. Tonight at 7 on Channel 4, the local station. Now to a positively jacked story about local people helping our most vulnerable community right now, senior citizens. Meals on Wings is a program run by the Center for Nutrition and Food Security at the University of North Florida. Its focus is to fill the gap by helping to feed seniors who are on the waiting list for Meals on Wheels. And donations are low because of the coronavirus. The food in these blue bags is a lifeline for 25 senior citizens living here in Duval County. It comes from four local hospitals, the food they never used. Instead of being thrown away, it's donated to the University of North Florida. It's divided up, added to, and then individually packaged. It may be um, rice and veggies from one hospital, protein from another, and then we bring it back in and figure out how to put that into a healthful meal. Lori Wright is a clinical nutritionist at UNF. She runs the Meals on Wings program. They were all supposed to be on spring break this week, but... We were just really worried about those seniors having the ability to access food given the short supply of food. And these are homebound seniors. She and her co-workers did not want their clients to worry about how they'd get their next meal with the panic many are seeing at local grocery stores. So they're packaging seven meals for each senior citizen and delivering them to their doorsteps. The reaction that they are receiving is heartwarming. And I brought him the seven meals the food and the toilet paper, and he just burst into tears. Um, he was so grateful for for that food and really didn't know where, where he was gonna be able to get it. Lori is talking about this man, Jack. He had a stroke recently. This is his second delivery in two weeks. And even though he has difficulty speaking, the smile on his face reminds us all about the importance of taking care of our neighbors. At seven meals a week, by the way. Meals on Wings delivers to an assisted living facility as well, but leaves the food at the door to maintain social distancing. And for deliveries to individual homes, as you just saw, senior citizens leave a chair outside their home where the food is left. Now, the program is powered by students generally, but they're not allowed in the kitchen because of the coronavirus, so staff at UNF is trying to fill the void. Hospitals are very busy right now, as we know, so they have less food to donate to Meals on Wings. So you can help. They really need canned vegetables and canned starches. To donate, look for a link inside this story on the morning show page of newsforjacks.com later this morning. Our five powerful radar sweeps.